The star of this exhibition is, of course, Irma Stern, and uh, you know, Martin Gottby introduces you to her in his usual, incredible, intricate, thorough, intellectual depth in, in this amazing book. One hesitates to call it a catalogue, this wonderful book that I'm very pleased to have received a copy of and really look forward to reading. But for me, the star of the show is Michael Gottby. <laughs> he is such an iconic figure in the South African art world, not only in the South African art historian's field, where he was my much beloved teacher that I was in awe of, and all us girls were also totally crushing on him because he was such a gorgeous young lecturer. Um, but he was also my mentor and then became my lifelong friend. And I think that his scholarship um, as an art historian who has uh, remained consistently engaged with the South African art field has inspired me and is very well known for the following reasons. Um, his critical engagement with South African art collections um, is really phenomenal and took the form of a series of very carefully curated exhibitions, each of which took years to acquire the artworks from various places and to research. Um, and I think above all the research that goes into these exhibitions are, I think all of us know, is absolutely impeccable, incredibly thorough. Each one of these exhibitions dealt with some genre or theme, uh, classical art historical themes, in an incredible thematic depth and contextual complexity. So there was Is There Still Life, which dealt with the seemingly very innocent genre of still life, in a way that was really very critically engaged. There was the lie of the land, this lovely pun on the complexity of landscape painting in the settler colony, um, that engaged it aesthetically from a, a point of view that was intensely appreciative of the genre, which is so important in, in the South African context, but also critically from a critical theory point of view, given that it is a fraud topic in a settler colonial landscape in which the art canon was predominantly white for so many years. There was Battleground, which again dealt with colonial representation and visual counter discourses in a way that actually brought what could be very abstract theoretical debates into stark relief and made it very real in relation to very particular examples of both colonial discourse and anti-colonial counter discourses. Then, of course, there was Home Truths, which touched very delicately and very tenderly and yet very incisively with domestic interiors in 2016-17. So this exhibition then falls in that kind of tradition of exploration of genre because it explores the genre of the nude, and we do know that that is, again, also quite a fraud genre. You learn as an art historian who have practiced throughout a large part of the 20th century that no genre is, it is innocent. And you know via Foucault that discourses are always implicated in power, and art also constitutes, of course, a cultural discourse that is intimately implicated with politics, the nation state, um, the invention of race, the construction of gender, etc. All of these critical inquiries play their role in Michael's uh, work, but never at the cost of respect and a very, uh, well, a very respectful and gentle inquiry. And um, it's as that gentleman art historian who brings considerable intellect to bear to his projects that we really revel in this, this exhibition. Now, I'm not going to introduce Irma Stern to you because I don't need to. <laughs> We're standing in her house, so we all know her. Um, and, you know, she is just phenomenally iconic. We know that she's our highest selling artist, if you want to approach it from that literal <laughs> point of view. And, uh, but I'm going to just summarize her life story very briefly. Um, but that life story, of course, emerges in rich topographical detail in Michael's book. 
But she was born in 1894 of German Jewish parents, St. Schweitzer and Rainke, here in South Africa. Um, and of course, that is an identity or an identification that proved to be a very, very fraught and difficult identification in the years that were to come. Um, and, uh, you know, that aspect is also explored by Michael in relation to her work. She studied in Weimar and Berlin at a time when, of course, we know from a modernist point of view, the most exciting German expressionist um, inquiries into primitivism and into a cult of local nudity emerged that was inspired by really interesting philosophies and theories. She was mentored by Max Pechstein, which one I think can see in her art, even though she acquired such a unique and particular, particularly inflected voice. And she was widely travelled in the Congo and Zanzibar, which, we, which is the evidence of which we also see all around us in these exhibitions. That said, um, there are, of course, very many hypercritical angles that one could adopt in relation to Stern's work and life. And um, I'm quite deeply immersed in settler colonial studies, and particularly the intersection between settler colonial studies and race critical studies, and white, whiteness studies in particular. So one could, of course, look at her art as an example of early settler nationalist art. Uh, and in this kind of, through this kind of lens, we would formulate um, an argument where her white settler identity is established through a process of radical othering, particularly of dark-skinned people and indigenes. And we can see through this lens that she reveled in the Rousseauian fantasy of unspoiled natives in exotic lands, against which the settler subject emerges as a quintessentially sophisticated and progressive modernist with all the attendant discontents and privilege of civilization. Or we can adopt a critical feminist perspective, where Stern emerges as the ambiguous figure of the emancipated female artist, who intrepidly owns the world and braves the masculine frontiers of avant-garde art, where she holds her own for decades, Yet she seemingly buys into all the paternalistic and objectifying discourses of the male colonial gaze, stripping women and people of colour not only of their clothing, but their names and identities. That wouldn't be at all academically an unsound perspective to adopt, and it would be insightful and it would be useful to our students. But here's the thing. Irma Stern is just such a mind-blowingly wonderful artist. I mean, her work is, to use Marian Arnold's terms, a feast for the eye. And walking around here again, you just can't help but be utterly seduced by her work. She's a painter's painter. She's an artist who worked compulsively and obsessively her entire life and who loved her art passionately and with absolute serious integrity. So her work sings of that. Her remarkable eye, so patently enchanted with the world, re-enchants our own perception of the world. Her undeniable sophistication and accomplishment as an artist, she just is such a good artist that I actually struggle to think of the German expressionist artists as in any way uh, comparable to her. I find her better. Her confident and bold application of colour burns the eye and seduces the senses, and her brushwork is just so phenomenally confident. And then there emerges, too, in the news, if you spend some time looking at them, a tenderness and an intimacy that cracks this glass wall between the subject and object, and that allows us into the haunting vulnerability of the naked embodied woman. And that makes you realize that she is a woman that has uh, empathy and compassion with her sex. I think that all this, knowing Michael, will be teased out gently and respectfully, as we know, in this wonderful book. And I really look forward to, uh, to reading it. Like I look forward to reading all Michael's writings. And I hope you enjoy the show and that you get to spend a bit of time in this lovely at space that was saved from the fire.
And Michael, congratulations. Yeah, again. Yeah.